This video is going in the graphics playlist. I actually recorded this video in February of 2015, which is almost a year ago. I don't know how I recorded this video because I was swamped working three jobs at the time and that's one reason why the channel fell behind. Anyway, ramping up the graphics playlist. I told you I'd be working on this playlist with the other playlists we're working on. So here you go. It's an older video, but it's just as awesome as back when I recorded them. You can see I've changed the scene a little bit from previous videos. I just wanted to get this Taurus in here to demonstrate some other concepts. I've also forced our light position to be up here, three units up. I've set a default value for my slider to be at three. In fact, let me, let me show you how I did that. I, I went to the window, me widget, and then in me widget, I simply said, hey, light white Y slider, set your value to three. That's going to invoke this signal, update the model call the view and tell the view to repaint and so now we get our light position defaulted to location three right above this torus i changed the torus's model to world transformation matrix to just be the identity matrix the torus is dead center in our scene and then i commented everything else out uh there's one problem though i can click and drag and move my scene around which is nice i like being able to just click my mouse and move it around but if you want this to track your mouse always whenever the mouse enters the window you can say set uh, mouse tracking. I set it to false, but if I set that to true, I'm essentially saying, hey, anytime the mouse comes in the window, track it. And so my mouse is in the window, and it's always tracking it, and it makes it kind of difficult to work with your window. So I actually don't like that. I'm going to turn that back off. And then another issue with the way we have this QT GUI set up is that I can't fly the camera around. I hit the W and the W is not responding. SD, all my camera flying controls are not working. So the way you fix that, I'm going to go to mouse move event. And whenever the mouse moves over the window, let's just say set focus to our GL widget. The problem is our GL widget is now being hosted inside of another outer widget. That's me widget. And me widget gets all the events from the mouse before me GL window does because me widget is the mother widget if you would which is hosting me GL window so whenever I click and I move the mouse that'll set the focus and allow me to fly my camera around my open GL window again let me bring this up you notice I'm moving the mouse no response WASDA I'm hitting the WASDA keys right now no response I click I can move my camera around by holding down the click I can then unclick or let go of my mouse button but now the GL window has focus I can fly the camera around and I like that because I like to move my mouse up here and be able to control my sliders with some of the older tools I've used in this playlist you'll notice I don't have my mouse tracking set up properly I should go fix that but alas it keeps things interesting okay here's an issue here's an issue first of all let me take this light and I'm going to put it below the scene all right, since we used that clamp function, you see the ambient light there. There's that hint of blue, that nice blue ambient light, since the light's below. Right now, our dot products between our eye vector and our light vector is less than zero. They're negative, and also the diffuse dot products are less than zero as well. So since we've clamped them to zero, we still have our ambient light. So I want to force our light to not be able to go negative. I think that's kind of... Uh, probably, a, I think it's a waste of range of my slider here. Uh, it makes sense to go negative in these directions on the uh, X and the Z, but the Y, I don't want that to go negative. And then another problem, well, actually, let me fix the negativity problem in me GL widget. I'm going to say on my light Y slider, or okay, light Y slider, uh, open up that constructor. The value, oh, we could just give the value 3 here. Default the value to 3. Uh, the minimum value is going to be 0. And then we shall rely on the rest of the defaults in there. But then we also need to invoke slider value changed at some point. I'll just do that here. Slider, slider, slider value changed. And that will cause our model to update and repaint and all that kind of stuff. Control F5, build that, run that. And our scene is good. I can now go to zero in the light, but not negative. But then there's another issue. If I if I take it up to 10, look how bright that is. Okay, let me fly the camera out. We're going to have to fly it out a ways to see the light out there. If I bring the light close to the surface, you see our diffuse light gets smaller and smaller. 
I'll bring the light out here. You can see the diffuse right underneath the light is nice and tight. The cosine of those angles, nice and tight because our light's close to the plane. But as I bring that light up and up and up and up and up, the angle between the light vector and the normals is becoming closer and closer to zero. They're becoming more parallel. Let me just illustrate that here with red. We'll take the surface normal at this location, at that fragment location. The light vector with the light all the way up there, the light vector, if I can point this right, I'll just click and click. There we go, but then let's normalize it. You see that light vector is pretty close to the normal vector. The, the, there's not much angle there, and so that cosine is becoming closer and closer to 1. But if I bring that light down closer to the plane, it gets much darker out here because the new light vector, which I'll do in green, the new light vector is like so. And there's lots of angle between that green vector and the red vector. And so the, the cosine there goes to 0, and we get this darker patch out there. That should be old hat. So yes, that makes sense when I bring the light high up here. My, uh, everything's going to be lit, but but if this is a flashlight, and let's say this is, I don't know, meters, kilometers, kilometers obviously a lot more dramatic than meters, but there's some distance here. Okay, well, there's going to be a point where the flashlight, it, 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 even though it's higher, it's not going to light up this entire scene as bright as it is. Okay, the further I move a light away from a surface, the dimmer the scene should go. It's the same with driving your car when you're driving on the road and there's a car approaching you. Regardless of whether they have the brights on or not, if the car is way out there, it doesn't hurt your eyes because the, the, the light's far away. But as that car gets closer and closer, the light gets more and more intense. There's not as much fall off as your eye gets closer to that light bulb shining right in your face down the road. And so it gets brighter. But we're not witnessing that here. The whole scene brightens up as I get this light up here. Now, if this light is super, super bright, yeah, it will light up the scene. Like the sun, the sun lights up the world quite nicely. It's a very bright light bulb. And because of the sun's brightness, the attenuation or the, or the fall off, the amount of light we lose due to the distance is not nearly as noticeable. But with a regular light bulb, we would see the scene go darker. So we need to add some attenuation, some fall off to our light based on the light position. And that's what we're going to work on in the next video. Thank you.